We're going to get started. Lord, I love you. Uh, I love to pray because I know you're the God that answers prayers. And I know that, Lord, today I couldn't do this without you. And so I'm just asking for your supernatural power to be on me, to be through me, to be in me, to ooze from me so that they see you, not me. And Lord, I just want to be your vessel, your microphone this morning. Put me on like a coat, Lord, and wear me that I would be more like you, Lord. I do ask for forgiveness of any sins in our lives that we would just continue to strive to be more like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, this morning I want to talk to you about something. It's, it's, I guess I told my wife this morning, I said, you know, uh, whenever they have to pull essence from a tree, they have to like extract it, right? And most of the time that means like removing pieces of it or crunching it and, and pressing it to be able to get the essence out of a flower, a tree, whatever it is. I said, that's how I felt like this message came. It was not, sometimes I can get there and I promise you I can write most of my sermons about five minutes. Because it's just there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I already know what I'm going to say. And then sometimes I'm like, uh, 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 and I felt like this one was squeezed out of me. So I pray that you receive something from this. And if you don't, it's okay, because I promise you I'll be preaching to me this morning. Uh, But I want to do a little thing with you real quick. I want you to think about a word, fun. Okay, now you just thought about it, right? So some of us thought about island in the sun, kicking back. You know, whether it was you taking one of those, I saw on on Facebook this week on social media, two hot dogs on a chair and look overlooking anybody else see that no i was the only one you see you know some of some facebook users in here like yes i thought it was hilarious all they did was you know they always people always taking the the pictures of like the legs next to the ocean and well they put two hot dogs on a little thing and and there was a screen in the back of the ocean and they took a picture of it made it look like it was their legs for their facebook picture hilarious anyway i was probably the only one that said, said that's about me right there that's that's my ideal of vacation at this point in time uh but i i I just, when you think about certain words, things automatically pop in our mind, right? The, you know, when I say fun, fun for some may not be fun for me. Pastor going out, riding 105 degrees on a motorcycle, burning up the road in his face and his arms and everything else, mm, not, not fun for me. Me on a boat, burning up my arms, and hey, that's fun for me. And so when I say fun, it's going to be different for everyone. When I say the word ordinary, the same thing happens, right? What's ordinary for me may not be ordinary for Josiah, may not be ordinary for HD. But I want to talk to you guys about out of the ordinary this morning, because there's something about ordinary is where we live. We live in the ordinary, and some people don't want, want to accept that, right? We don't want to, oh, man, you know, I was, I was born for the mountaintops, and, I was, and that's good. Listen, I'm, I'm here to tell you those mountaintop experiences, especially with Christ, are fantastic, and they're necessary in order for us to continue on the road that we're on. But this morning as I teach and I preach, what I really want to go over is the fact that We were meant for extraordinary time, but we were meant to live in ordinary places, in ordinary things. And and I preached a sermon one time, and I basically talked about that. We weren't meant to inhabit the mountains. You know, uh, that's a good place to be. But the truth is, in a few months, that mountain's going to be so cold, you ain't going to want to be there. Those mountaintops are really cute in the summertime. And I used to live in Pinedale, uh, Wyoming. And listen, it was awesome in June. Negative 40 is not awesome in December. Okay. Everything changed. And so my expectation of ordinary changed. My understanding of ordinary had to change. Because if I didn't, what would happen? I would have unfulfilled expectations. If my, my life is, and I, and I go back to what Pastor said last week, I choose. My days, I choose to have a good day. And then last week, I, I had an idea of what I want to talk on. And then when I heard Pastor say that, I thought, yep, okay, Holy Spirit. I knew that I was going that way, but I wanted to make sure I was right, and that was good. So, but he had talked about, Jill asked him one time, Pastor, why can't we have every experience like camp? Why can't we have every experience like, and the truth is, one, we don't know how to 
nurture that all the time, right? We're in certain situations and certain times that have been nurtured, that have been catered to that one specific experience. We can't do that every single day. If we did, our lives would be so messed up. They would be so busy. We'd be frantic. We would be messed up and we would never get to grow. But it's in those ordinary times, if a seed's planted in the ground and it's watered and it's watered and it's watered, it's pretty ordinary, right? But then something extraordinary happens. One day you go out and you're like, oh, hey, there's a little sprout. And then it starts growing and then it's ordinary. It's ordinary. Leaves, 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 leaves. All of a sudden, flower. Hey. That's extraordinary. And that's how our lives are. Many a times it's the same exact way. Our lives are ordinary, 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 plucking away, plucking away, plucking away, working hard, working hard, working hard. Same thing, same thing, same thing. And then all of a sudden, bam, there's that one moment. Raise, promotion. You could put it on, you can, there's a million things. Again, my ordinary, my extraordinary may be different than yours. But it's the same consistency that allows our ordinary in one day to evolve into an extraordinary moment, but it's in a moment, and it's it's catered for that specific time, for that specific experience. And so this morning, I want to talk to you about Romans 9, 21 simply says this, a potter has the right to do what he wants with his clay. Listen, a potter has the right to do what he wants with his clay. Now, we as believers this isn't always our favorite, right? Because he's supposed to be the potter and we're supposed to be the clay. So that means that I don't get to choose always what I'm to be. My calling is to follow his will and his will alone. Not my will. Your will be done. Listen, Jesus did not want to go to the cross. You have to understand that. Why? Because he was fully God and fully man. As the man side of him, he understood, this is getting ready to hurt real bad. They're going to embarrass me. They're going to spit on me. They're going to do all of these things to my physical body. Understanding they can't take my spirit from me, but they can definitely punish my body. And in doing so, he knew he was getting ready to face a, a very difficult season. And so a potter has the right to do what he wants with his clay. If he's willing to do that with his son, Guess what? He's willing to do that with us. Okay? So, doesn't he? He can. He can make something from a special occasion or something for ordinary use from the same lump of clay. From the same lump of clay. I I, I read this the other day and I thought, man, sometimes I'm like, oh God, yes, uh, use me. And when I'm saying use me, really what I'm saying is, you know, take me to the nations, take me. And he said, I I took you to New Caney, an ordinary place. I took you to Crosby, an ordinary place. I do not know what is popping, but I am making this thing just pop in my ear. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Um, And so he took me to an ordinary place. But that does not exclude me from the extraordinary. There are moments that happen in Crosby, in New Cain. Oh, there we go. Okay. Greg said he was going to mess with me back there, Greg. (laughs) Make sure it wasn't you back there. Um, He's made us for these extremely awesome experiences, but those extremely awesome experiences only come out of ordinary, ordinary, ordinary ordinary right so ordinary what is it simple it's with no special or distinctive features normal you know what made me think about this verse with this thought it was like everybody i talked to especially during covid right everybody i talked to how you doing that nah another day another day as if to say same old same old same old, same old, right? And, and the truth is, yes, it is the same old. And God intended us to live in these, but it's what we do with the same old that's going to make my life look different tomorrow. My tomorrow is correlated extremely strongly with my today. I can't get to a fantastic tomorrow without a fantastic working today. If I do nothing today, 
my tomorrow is going to look a lot the same. Amen? So it's the, clay, it's the clay's ability to be molded that determines whether it can be made into something extraordinary or something ordinary. And I thought, dude, that is so good. I'm sitting there talking with my wife, and I was like, okay, baby, I need some help. Just, I'm just going to talk at you, and I'm going to answer my own questions as I'm talking. So just talk back. And so she's like, okay. And so I started talking to her, and this is what I came up with. I thought, you know what? What separates the lump of clay from an extraordinary pot to an ordinary pot? And the truth is, it's only the clay. It's the only thing that can make a difference. Because it's the same potter, it's the same clay, it's the same everything. But it's that clay's ability in that moment to be molded that determined whether it was going to be extraordinary or not. I may have to switch over to this other one. If this is being crazy, I'll, I'll just switch. Is that, is that a better idea? I need a thumbs up back there. All right. There we go. So it's the clay's ability to be molded that's going to determine whether or not it's able to be molded into something extraordinary. And this is what I mean by that. So if a clay gets on the potter's wheel, okay, and how, how many in here has ever seen a potter work with clay? I've watched it a couple times, never done it. I don't know that I have the patience for it, but it's incredible, right? And anytime you see an artist, and that's an artist, anytime you see an artist at work, truly at work, you're just like, sit back and you watch Bob Ross and taking just some splat, 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 splat masterpiece. And you're like, I, I, yeah, all he did was like literally splat the paint on there. And then all of a sudden that was mountains with a beautiful sunset. And I'm like, I, yeah, happy trees, you know, and it's like, it's like, how did that come out? And it, and it was simply this. God was saying, listen, I got you. But you have to be able to be molded. And so this. So how do we stay moldable? It's important in life, right? We stay moldable. If we're going to be in the potter's hand, we have to stay moldable. And it's like this. Jeremiah 18, 5 through 10 simply says this. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Says the Lord. Look as the clay is in the potter's hands so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck it up or to pull it down and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, it will be saved. It will be saved. If I, if I say, nope, that's it, I want it to be saved, then it will be saved. In that moment that I say, be saved, it's saved. That's what God did with me. That's what God did with H. That's what God did with Travis. In that moment, he said, listen, I don't want you to live this life anymore. I want you to be saved. He said, bam, I made a response and I went. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to put my hand, myself in your hand. And when I made that choice, I became a potter. I became the clay. And I said, Lord, I'm allowing myself to be molded. And to the extent that I allow myself to be molded is to the extent that he can use me. Okay? And so, and, and uh, vice versa. If I say bless this thing, if I say I'm going to use this thing, if I say this nation's going to be blessed, and in that moment they start doing evil, the same thing happens. I can curse it just like that, and I'll tear it down. How many businesses, how many, how many life choices have we made in my home? Like, oh, man, we're doing good, we're doing good, we're doing, and we mess up, and it's like, man, I just feel like that thing just fell apart. Just like yesterday, it was like, phew, just, man, it was good, and then, phew. so I went to the drawing board, right? But Lord, forgive me. If there's something I needed, forgive me, right? And that's what he said. In that moment that you asked for true repentance, now, I'm not saying, look, I want my business back, I want my wife back, I want my, I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying the truth is, when I truly repent, I say, Lord, look, you know what? Like Pastor always says, like, I pray for the best and expect and, and accept the, the consequences, accept the verdict. Why? Because the truth is, there are some things David, whenever he prayed, Lord, I want you to save my son. Lord, I want you to save my son. Lord, I want you to save my son. My son died. All right. Now, I wash myself and I get up and I go. Now, that's not always easy. 
Now listen, I'm not up here telling you that those moments and those times are easy, but I am saying that I'm accepting the fact that this is how it is. I'm accepting the fact that I am the clay and you're the potter. In our lives, if we want to be effective, if we want to be able to move to the next place, we have to accept the fact that I'm the clay and he's the potter. The clay does not get a say in how he turns out. So many times in America, we like to have a say in our own lives. We like to have a say in how, where I work and how I do this. And, how I, and yes, to an extent we do. But if we're to follow the will of God, then we just simply become clay in the potter's hand. So he has, the, obedience is huge. How we obey him allows us to be moldable. If we're in constant disobedience with God, we're constantly saying, no. I watch Naya. Y'all watch tonight. <laughs> I tell him, don't run out there. No. And what's he doing? He's like, no. Why? He's getting stiff. What happens if clay gets stiff? Very hard to work with. Very, very hard to work with. Okay? Next thing, drying out. Now, this is a big thing in, in believers, right? We hear, oh, I'm in a dry season. I'm in a, you, you put the, the descriptive there. I'm in this kind of season. I'm in this kind of season. Really what they're saying is I'm drying out. I'm just not feeling like I was before. And most of it, 90% of it, if we're honest, isn't a dry season. It's the fact that we're just simply not spending enough time with God. That's, that's what it's really most of the time saying. It's not that we don't go through times that are more difficult, but there, it, 90% of the time when I hear somebody says, I'm just in a dry season, I want to be like, how much did you read your word last week? It says that it waters me. Is God a liar? No. So what it really means is I'm simply not spending enough time with the king. When I spend more time with the king, easy to be molded. When I spend more time with the king, easy to be molded. Isaiah 58, 11 says this, And the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire in scorched places. I just said if I'm in a dry season, he's satisfying me even in dry season. I'm being watered even in dry season. And so he says, your desire in scorched places and give strength to your bones and you will be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose water does not fail. Whose water does not fail. That's an important verse for us to remember. Whose water does not fail. What else do we need? We need faith. Do you have faith to put yourself on the potter's wheel? That's what it really comes down to. Am I willing to say, Lord, you're big enough that if I put myself on your wheel, that you're going to be able to make this happen? And we're putting our faith in him saying, Lord, I trust you enough and I believe you big enough that when I set myself on the wheel, you're going to get me where I need to go. Isaiah 64, 8 says this, but now, O Lord, you are the Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter, we are the work of your hand. We're your workmanship. We don't want the glory, we want you. You work me out the way you need to. Let me continue just to stick myself back on the potter's wheel and mold me and mold me and mold me until you've made what you want. And now that's not always easy, but that's where we got to keep going. Now, we all love rags to riches stories, to gutters, to the palace. We've heard them, right? I, I, I mean, I, look, I, I'm a sucker for them. As soon as I hear one, I'm like, oh, man, that's, that's I was born in obscurity, but one day, Lord, I'm being in the palace, right? We love those stories. Look, I was, born, I was born in an orphanage, but thank God I don't live in one today, okay? And, and so I love these stories, but the truth is our rags to riches stories what if the roles were reversed? What if I would have been born in a palace and had to go to the gutter? Could you still allow your king to be your king? Moses did. Moses did. Listen, I, I love the story of Moses. So when I read this, I thought, what would happen in our own lives if we just took ourselves and we said, look, Lord, Moses, I want to be like Moses. I will forsake this world and all the goodness that, it, listen, Moses was the grandson of Pharaoh. Me and my wife talked about this. You don't want to know the greatest thing to be? The son of the president. The one, that, the second son of the king. 
one that knows, hey, I don't have no responsibilities, but I get all the rewards of being the second son of the king. I get the palace and I get all the good things that come with it. But I know that I don't have a lot of responsibility that has to go with that reward. That's the best place in the world to be. Moses is sitting right there. He's like, I'm the grandson of the Pharaoh. I get all the goodness, and I know I'll never take over. I wasn't born in Egypt. I know that I will never have to take over this kingdom, but I get all the benefits of being like I was born into this kingdom. And it says, it was, so, uh, this is Hebrews 11. I, I messed this up, but, Ms. Cheryl, you're so awesome. Uh, Hebrews 11, 24 through 27, it says, it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. 25, he chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to a greater reward. He was looking ahead to a greater reward. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger, and he kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who was invisible. I read that verse and I'm just thinking, man, I mean, we, we act like we could do it, right? Oh, man, God, I'll follow you anywhere. Oh, you're, you're the greatest. I would do anything for you until my bills weren't met last month. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, God, where are you? Why didn't I get enough money this last month, right? And, and I'm telling you, could you give up a kingdom? Could you give up a palace? And it's hard for us to give up a tithe, let alone a palace. And so let's just be real. In America, like, could we give up a palace? And, and I'm saying this today. Could I go from the palace of the earth and give it up for the palace of the kingdom? Could I allow myself to not be so short-sighted that I live for today instead I say look I'm living for an eternity because I know that's where you're wanting me to be could I give up the passing fleeting pleasures of sin to say yes to him can you forsake it all or better yet can you forsake what looks extraordinary on earth to gain what is extraordinary for eternity could you give up everything good on earth to make sure that you had everything good in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. We have to continue to remember that our God said on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 13, 45 through 46 simply says this. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking a beautiful pearl. Woo. When? He had found one pearl of great fight. He went and sold all that he had and bought it. Can you sell your life to gain a better one? Can you sell your life in such a way that says, you know what? I don't care if you make me ordinary, God, or if you make me extraordinary. I'm good with it. Can you sell your life in such a way that if, you know what? I just continue to be dad. I continue to be husband, that's good enough. I continue to be business owner, that's good enough. Lord, wherever you want me, I'm going to continue to prepare like today could be extraordinary because in my everyday ordinary, my extraordinary is being birthed. He's preparing me constantly for a place that he has prepared for me. What are those prepared places? Those are those Kairos moments, those moments that my timeline and God's timeline intersect. And then we come together. And he's saying, listen, I've so created you for the Kairos moments, but it's in those ordinary moments that you're going to find me, that you're going to grow, that you're going to continue. Can you seek me in the ordinary moments? Can you go out of the ordinary to find me? This morning, I want to leave you with this one thought because I love quotes. Quotes are something that just, they spur me on. They're easy to remember, and they can keep my mind sharp. It says this, and it's real simple. Some people are so poor, all they have is money. 
Some people are so poor that all they have is money. In America today, some people are so poor, all they have is money. Knowing that there's an eternity forever to spend with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, I say yes to that. I say I forsake it all, God, if that's what it takes. I lay down my earthly desires, my fleshly wants, and I say yes to the King this morning. I, I don't know everybody's place in here, but if you say, you know what, man, I've kind of been living for myself. I've just been living for myself. Look, I don't even need you to raise your hand this morning. I just want to pray a simple prayer with everybody because I think this is 90% of Americans. That in moments, uh, the truth is, if it came out, we would show that we've been living for mortgages and have car notes and, and guns and whatever our passions lie in. And the truth is, God's saying, could you forsake all of that for me? Jesus forsook all of heaven for you. Could you do the same? Could you do the same? Jesus walked out of ordinary heaven into ordinary earth. But the problem was ordinary heaven was so much better. And God's saying, I've called you to the ordinary, but in your eyes, it's going to be extraordinary because it's heaven. Our streets are gold. Our gates are pearls. Can you give up ordinary asphalt for streets of gold? Can you give up ordinary gates for gates of pearls? Can you give up ordinary understanding that's limited by our flesh and by our experience for unlimited understanding, for unlimited wisdom, for unlimited guidance? God wants to give you that this morning. Lord, I love you and I thank you. I just thank you for the, everybody in this place this morning that they're in a place that said, Lord, you know what? I've been living for myself. I've been living to please my flesh. I've been living to fulfill my desires. And Lord, I just pray right now that they would cast that to the side and say, you know what? I forsake it all. Like the man that was willing to sell everything for the pearl. You are that great pearl, God. You are the great pearl that every single person on earth needs to find. But are they willing to sell it all like the rich young ruler? Sell it all and come and follow me. I can't do that. Lord, there's going to be so many that get to heaven on that day of judgment and say, I could not give up the passing of the earth for the unpassing of eternity. I wish I could go back. But we have that moment right now. And Lord, I just pray that people would submit themselves and be potter. They would just put themselves in to the potter's hand and say, Lord, I just want to be moldable clay. I just want to be the clay that's molded by you. I love you. I thank you. I just pray that every single person in here today has or is currently saying, I want to forsake it all for the kingdom. I want to give it all up if that's what it takes for the kingdom. Let us to lay aside every weight that entangles us and every sin that distracts us. There are so many distractions out there today. I pray that our eyes be so locked in gaze with you that we couldn't go to the left or the right if you didn't go because we would be so focused on you that we would simply miss everything else. And it wouldn't even be a problem because we wouldn't even know that we missed it. We love you, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I want to make some announcements this morning. I pray that you guys got that. It was something that I just feel like the Lord had just kind of been pressing out of me. And like I said, I just so realized that it's okay to live in the ordinary. In this COVID time, it felt like every day was ordinary. And it was like there was extraordinary circumstances according to the news that were going on and phenoms everywhere. But the truth was 99% of the world was like, we're just living another day on Skype, not even getting to go out and meet friends, not even, and I just felt like, man, God, you've called us to so much more than ordinary, but yet we grow in the ordinary. So we be good with the ordinary and expect the extraordinary and continue to prepare for the extraordinary. Amen. Listen, two or more prayer group this week. Anything you want? Anything you're speaking on specifically? Nothing specifically? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. It's just, and, and 
I haven't physically got to talk to H a lot about this, but I want to tell you some. There's something that's happening in this house because of this group. I mean that. Like I'm, I'm serious. Like I, every time I talk to H, every time I talk to people that are involved in this, man, I see growth that's happening. I see, I see like James and Annie, like their lives are being blessed. Their lives are becoming bigger simply because they're, they've been coming and they've been gleaning and they've been catching it. Not only that, man, praying. How powerful is that? What a, what a simple thought. But prayer is so effective in our lives. We need to continue to do it corporately and individually. So come out Tuesday night. And there will be youth this week as well. Uh, we're going to have a, a, a back to school party. Just hanging out with the kids. Letting them know we're going to be praying for them. Miss Sheila, she's not in here. I'll get her names of all the high school kids too. And make sure that they're in there so that we can be praying for them as well. As Lord knows that they need it at that age. Amen. August 18th is the OCD's Let's Get Together Day. Every third Wednesday of the month, there will be a meeting out in the um, New Caney campus. There's going to be coffee uh, at Camp Holy Wild and work on projects. Smart time. Uh, starting times is going to vary according to the seasons. Um, see Neil Smith for details. August 28th will be Lift Ladies in Fellowship Together. Um, sign up in the back. Ends August 22nd. Make and take a DIY chalk couture painting. Um, and you guys have lift today too, right? Lift today, right after service. So not only are you guys going to be able to get together on the 28th, today after service, the ladies will be getting together and, and just hanging out, teaching, fellowshipping, food. Always. Man, I wish I was a woman. Just make sure you save that for me, okay? Um, save the date. September 19th. I was talking to a guy the other day. Uh, he's like, he's like uh, I, I don't mean that. It was a joke. Just in case people on the, it was a joke. It was a stupid one, but it was a joke, okay? Um, I just wanted food. I'm hungry, okay? Um, listen, I'm not me when I'm hungry, okay? Uh, save the date. September 9th, I was talking to a guy the other day. I stopped at an ice cream cone store. My wife will tell you. I stopped and he's like, hey, 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 come here, come here, come here. And he takes me into his garage. And I mean, the guy had like 10 or 12 motorcycles. He had like two of these fine, fine, nice trucks. He's like, I'm going to have one ready. I don't know which one yet, but I was, I'm going to have one ready for the car show. So I got to talk to him and he's like, yeah, man. He's like, I'm excited about it. So I said, like, get it done. Come on. So it's going to be an important day. It's a huge day for our church, the fact that we get to reach out into our communities. There's a lot of churches that just exist. It's not enough. It's not enough to be a church that sits in the four walls. We have to be a church that goes outside of these four walls and says we're going to affect our community. And how do we do that? We have outreach. We have things that attract people that are not in church so that they will come. And that's where we find it. Amen. Um, so save that date. It's a huge deal. Again, ordinary to extraordinary. It's an ordinary thing to go cut limbs, to go do a work day. It's an extraordinary thing when people are giving their lives to Christ, when lives are being changed, when addiction is being broken. Those are extraordinary things, and that's the kind of thing we expect from Muscle Car. Uh, again, our church merch online. Uh, shop at holywild.net slash shop. Check it out. See what's new. Um, I, I don't... I don't know if those are actually our shirts or not. Are those actually our shirts or are those just possibilities? Those are actually ours? Okay, my wife's giving me the yes. So if it's wrong, <laughs> just say it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my fault anyway. You're right. My bad, dude. My bad, H. <laughs> You're right. I listen to a man who's been married for a long time, okay? <laughs> He'll teach me. Um, but seriously, guys, go on there. Check it out. See what's new. Um, I love, oh yeah, those are ours. I see some of the sayings on there. Okay. Um, I love, I love the fact that our church is, is just doing th new things. Amen. We don't have to be the same as everybody else. We can be where misfits fit and we can fit and we're good with that. Amen. Well, I pray that you guys have a blessed week. I love you guys. I pray that you got something this morning. Be praying for our pastor. This is going to be a hard week. Going to do a funeral of a friend in Missouri is going to be a hard week. Uh, and you laugh because you're thinking about writing, but he's going to be going to Missouri uh, on Friday. Uh, yeah, we got, we got to do that too. Um, huh? No, no, I can't do that. The pastor won't pay me this week. <laughs> yeah, he's taking out my paycheck. <laughs> he may be disappointed. 
<laughs> but uh, age, will you guys come up? We'll do some offering. But be praying for our pastor this week as he's uh, as he's getting. He is enjoying his time. Don't get me wrong. I promise you, he's on his bike and he's enjoying riding his bike. But when he gets to Missouri, it's going to be a sober feeling doing doing a friend's uh, funeral who's your age. It's tough. It's tough. You know. And uh, and he was a friend. Like I said, we just saw him a week and a half ago. It was that's the part that was surreal to me was the fact that we just saw him and, and now he's gone. So be praying for Birdie. Be praying for that family. Uh, it's it's not easy. Uh, and trying to figure out what's next in those situations, those times, are really hard. Uh, man, as you guys give today, we do want to bless the gift and the giver in this house. But listen, this is so for you. This is so for you. The more you guys learn to give, I promise you, your lives will be so open and so, so overflowing. And that's even what the Bible says. And so this morning, we do release the, the gift in this house. I thank you, Lord, for the gift and the giver. I just pray that, Lord, not only would it be pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing, but, Lord, they would see your faithfulness. That if nothing else, they just see how big their God is. And they begin to trust you. Again, this is another thing of just putting my life onto the potter's wheel and saying, I'm the clay. And, Lord, by giving, we're saying, I'm the clay. It's another area of submission that we have to give to you. And so, Lord, we just submit our lives to you and our gifts and our finances and our time and every area of our lives that we would submit to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we believe in God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received in favor, success to the kingdom. As they come around, uh, you know, I'm really, really just thankful for you guys. Thankful for our opportunity, Pastor. If you do happen to see this, I love you. I pray that you're having a good time. I pray that the wind therapy is blessing you and that know that this place is taken care of because of, of your staff and your members. We love you guys today. Be blessed. Have a good week. Amen.